From the windswept deserts and arid tundra of Thanalan, to the ancient primeval forests of Gridania, to the seaside cliffs of Lanoseca infused with the very soul of piracy, the more exotic locales awash in wonder and mystery. Eorzea is a land of myriad stories and even more secrets to discover. Join me, fellow scholars, as we undertake a grand endeavor. Now, it is time for Explaining Eorzea. Belief in the Twelve, a pantheon of gods and goddesses, each represented by one of the six elements upon which all creation is founded, has served as a cornerstone for civilization in Eorzea for millennia. Though theologians remain unsure of the exact origin of Twelve worship in Eorzea, studies of relics from ancient Allegan civilization tell us that even 5,000 years ago, at the peak of the Third Astral Era, the six and six deities were already ingrained in society as they are today. Not only is the year divided into 12 and 12 year cycles used in modern astrology, city states still choose a patron deity to serve as a guardian over their lands, with that deity becoming a focal point of cultural development, such as the case of Nodthal and the economically inclined Uldalan. Sometimes people from certain races or professions will choose to focus their worship on a single deity. Many Makode of the Seekers of the Sun Clan will follow the teachings of Azimia, the Warden and Goddess of the Sun. Sailors often pray to Lamellon, Watcher of the Seas and Goddess of Navigation, to see their ships safely to port. And artisans will pray to Byrakot to guide their skillful hands. Now to detail the gods by name, their interests, we will start at the top, and go clockwise, starting with Byragat the Builder. Byragat is the purveyor of architecture and industry and the god of arts. He commands the element of lightning and is associated with the seventh moon of the Eorzean calendar. Byragat is the elder brother of Halone and pupil of Thaliac. He is most often depicted as an ardent smith with a two-headed hammer. His symbol is the hand. And of course, Byragat, as you know, is the patron of crafters alike. His blessing has created many high-quality items that you, dear adventurer, have been able to profit from. Next is Ralgar, the Destroyer. Ralgar, who is the Breaker of Worlds, the God of Destruction, and the Guardian Deity of the formerly fallen nation, but recently resurrected Alamego. He commands the Element of Lightning and is associated with the Eighth Moon of the Eorzean Calendar. Ralgar is father of both Byragot and Helone, and serves as attendant to Namiya, he is most often depicted as a Magi carrying a Staff of Bronze. His symbol is the Streaking Meteor. And we must remember that Ralgar's Fist is a monastic tradition that took place in Alamego. And you, dear warrior, if you follow the path of the monk, will become very well acquainted with it. On to Izima the Warden. Izima is Keeper of the Sun and Goddess of Inquiry. She commands the Element of Fire and is associated with the Ninth Moon of the Eorzean Calendar. Izima is the daughter of Athlac and the elder sister of Minfinia. She is most often depicted as a noble lady holding a golden fan, and her symbol is that of the Radiant Sun. Those adventurers who have traveled the length and breadth of Eorzea have encountered the gentleman detective Hildebrand. Hildebrand was involved in a nefarious case involving Izima's virtue, a golden necklace that was a shackle to some and a treasure to others. We now come to Nogthal, the traitors, Nogthal, overseer of the underworld and god of commerce, is the guardian deity of Ulda, and the Udalans are fervent in their worship of him. He commands the element of fire and is associated with the tenth moon of the Eorzean calendar. Nogthal is the single manifestation of the deific twins Nald and Thal. He is most often depicted as a discerning merchant holding a balance. His symbol is the cowrie, an ancient shell currency. For any adventurer worth their salt trying to make a fortune, it would be wise to seek the traitors of Ulda and the worship of Nald Thal. But be wary, because even in business, there are predators. Now we come to Nofika the Matron. Nofika, tender of soils and harvests, the goddess of abundance, is the guardian deity of Gridania. She commands the element of earth and is associated with the 11th moon of the Eorzean calendar. Nofika is the daughter of Azima and the younger sister of Lamellian. She is most often depicted as a jubilant farmer holding a scythe of steel. Her symbol is the spring leaf. And in Gridania, 
Under the auspices of Nofika, we find all of the jobs that rely on the natural world. From the lancer and the archer that use wood and sinew to wrap their weapons and string their bows, to the carpenter and leather worker who construct, and finally the conjurer who use the very forces of nature and the earth itself to stave off death. Next is Altlik the Keeper. Altlik the Keeper is the surveyor of change and space and god of time. He commands the element of earth and is associated with the 12th moon of the Eorzean calendar. Altlik is the father of Azima and Minfinia and the elder brother to Nymea. He is most often depicted as an austere emperor wielding a mithril great axe. His symbol is the hourglass. Altlik claims everything in time, as time is his domain. Now on to Halon the Fury. Halon, mover of glaciers and goddess of war, is the guardian deity of Ishgard. She commands the element of ice and is associated with the first moon of the Eorzean calendar. Halon is the daughter of Ralgar and bitter rival to Nofiga. She is most often depicted as a relentless warrioress, armed with a bronze great shield. Her symbol is the three spears. Adventurers, if some of you walk the path of the gladiator, that later may become a paladin, you will be familiar with Halone, as one of your finest techniques is the Rage of Halone. Keep that in mind, whether you fight enemies or other adventurers in the arena. Minfinia the Lover. Minfinia is the keeper of the twin moons and goddess of love. She commands the element of ice and is associated with the second moon of the Eorzean calendar. Minfinia is the sister of Izima and the divine lover of Ashan. She is most often depicted as a maid carrying a round skillet, and her symbol is the full moon. There have been many adventurers who have uttered an impromptu praise at the sight of beauty to Minfinia the Lover, and many dedicated lovers who have uttered sincere thanks to Minfinia for a lifetime of happiness. We now have Thaliac the Scholar. Thaliac, ruler of rivers and wisdom, and the god of knowledge is the guardian deity of Charlian. He commands the element of water and is associated with the third moon of the Eorzean calendar. Thaliac is the father of Lamelian and the teacher of Byragot. He is most often depicted as a reserved scholar holding an ashen staff. His symbol is the scroll. The Charlians are fervent with study like the Udalans are fervent with trade. Both should never be underestimated and both should be consulted in matters where they are experts. Remember that, adventurer, and you will prosper. On to Nymia the Spinner. Nymia is the watcher of celestial bodies and goddess of fate. She commands the element of water and is associated with the fourth moon of the Eorzean calendar. Nymia is the younger sister of Athlak and the master of Ralgar. She is most often depicted as a weaver donning a white silken veil. Her symbol is the spinning wheel. The spinning wheel is appropriate for the mistress of fate because no matter what happens, you may try to defy her and she may grant you a little bit of leeway, but ultimately, your path is threaded by her. And ultimately, we have Lamellian the Navigator. Lamellian, watcher of the seas and goddess of navigation, is the guardian deity of Limza Lominza. She commands the element of wind and is associated with the fifth moon of the Eorzean calendar. Lamellian is the daughter of Thaliac and elder sister of Nofika. She is most often depicted as a strong fisherwoman, wielding a long-bladed harpoon her symbol is the wave. Now, adventurers, you may have your own patron deity, but I'll let you in on no small secret. Lamellian, when I adventure, is mine. The final member of the Twelve is Ashan the Wanderer. Ashan is a ruler of the mountains and god of wanderers and vagrants. He commands the element of wind and is associated with the sixth moon of the Eorzean calendar. Ashan is the brother of Nalvthal and a close companion of Halon. He is most often depicted as a carefree ranger wielding a bow of yew. His symbol is the walking stick. Adventurers, if nothing else, every time you see a shrine to Ashan, leave a few gil, as you never know when the Wanderer's Blessing will help you find that extra treasure chest, or a sleeping enemy patrol, a friendly face out in the wild, or a soft place to lay down for the evening. And just like that, we finish the first video in the Explaining Eorzea series. This was a new type of video for me to do, so if you liked it, let me know in the comments below if there's something I can improve on. Of course, let me know. And if you have a suggestion for a future video, well, you already know, to leave a comment. Additionally, if you like what I do, or you like what the channel does specifically, go on and subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with everything the channel does. You can find me on Twitter, at Nimicry. And you can also find me on Twitch every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
Finally, for those truly above and beyond the call of duty, those who enjoyed the video, or those who happen to like me a lot, there is the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Nimicry. That allows me to make longer, more detailed videos, and ultimately is helpful to me. So it's not mandatory, but if you'd like to do it, you can. I enjoyed making this video, and I can't wait to see you in the next Explaining Eorzea video. Take care, and may the mount you're farming drop on the first kill.